Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing a little torching on the trailer today and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to teach y'all some oxy fuel. I think this is gonna be a good episode for anyone who wants to know a little bit more about the process and some of the do's and don'ts with oxy fuel and oxyacetylene cutting. Let's get into it. As you may or may not know, I've been working on this fab trailer for a while. I wanna be able to take it around to some of the local schools in Texas and do some demos and you know, kind of promote what we're doing at well.com and to just get some more people interested in the trade. I wanna be able to have just about anything I need to build anything or do welding demos and any sort of process and procedure. So one of those things being oxy fuel cutting, I've got the bottle set up for my oxygen bottle, but I need a setup for my acetylene bottle. So that's what I've built here. This is made out of a piece of 12 inch by 12 inch by quarter quarter inch square tubing. Yeah, that's a big chunk of square tubing. And I got to do a little bit of weight reduction because it's pretty heavy. So I figured it's a good time to break out the old cutting torch. The old gas axe, as they like to call it. If you don't know anything about the oxygen and the acetylene cutting process, I think now is a good time we get into some of the theory. With oxy fuel cutting, you need at least oxygen and some sort of fuel. Today, we're gonna focus on acetylene. That's what we're gonna be using. You can use a different range of pressures with your oxygen to your acetylene according to the metal thickness that you're using and the cutting tip that you're using. And we've had a lot of videos on oxygen and acetylene cutting. If you haven't seen them already, go check out these videos. Today, I'm gonna teach you some more fundamentals of the process. One of those being is what these two gases even do to our metal. The acetylene is coming in, getting that metal nice and hot, getting it ready for that oxygen to rapidly oxide, not melt, which is most people think. It rapidly oxides and burns the steel away. You can cut through crazy thick metals with it. And with the right technique, you can even long cut some metals with it, which is something that we're gonna be going over today. However, it is not suitable for all metals. Sometimes it's difficult to cut carbon steel if you don't know what you're doing. I think a lot of people know what we're going to go over first, and that is what metals you can actually cut. This is one of the fundamentals of oxyacetylene, oxy fuel, oxy whatever cutting is you need what we talked about early is that iron oxide that is able to rapidly react with that oxygen. If you're not able to form that iron oxide, then you're not going to be able to get that reaction. That being said, we're only limited to cutting ferrous metals. Maybe something you've never heard before, but here's how I can make it really obvious to you. If you go look on the periodic table of elements, what is iron? Iron is Fe. Fe is the first two letters in the word ferrous. That's how you know what a ferrous metal is. It contains iron. So for our low carbon steel, we've got iron in there. When we move into our stainless, there's virtually none. There's some carbon in there, but there's not exactly a whole lot of iron, if any at all. And then we move again into our aluminum, non-ferrous metals. So you can kind of predict what's gonna to happen to these three metals as we go about cutting them. So let's try them out. Now, just like any other hot work process, you're gonna to wanna to stay PPD'd up. You never know when a cutting torch might splash back in your face if you're not using it properly. I do have my safety glasses, these are T5s. It is a bright process. Not only that, we're gonna put a lot of sparks out today and I'm gonna be doing a lot of work on this a little bit later on. So I'm head to toe FR stuff. Pretty slicked up with Ariat gear. Everything's FR, head to toe. I love these khakis. These are probably my favorite pair of pants I've ever worn as far as work pants. And I don't really care for a lot of laces on my boots when I'm doing hot work stuff because those are just another crevasses for them BBs and boogers to fall into. Now that we're all freshened up, ready to cut, we'll crank it on. I got a number zero tip on here, which should work for the thicknesses that we got. We're gonna go for a neutral flame. And we're gonna start with this aluminum piece. Being a non-ferrous metal, we should pretty much get a good idea of what's gonna happen. We start on the edge, try to get things hot, get that non-existent layer coming. Starting to see something happening. But even when I introduce that oxygen, it almost keeps it from happening. Just melting this at this point. It, aluminum has a much lower melting point. I'm not even using any oxygen at this point. It's kind of satisfying to watch. I suppose if you really just just had to and you didn't care about what was it going to actually look like, why couldn't you cut some aluminum with, I, again, I'm not even using the oxygen. The oxygen seems to slow up the process a little bit, ironically. Now we're going to move on to the stainless. Now the stainless has a much higher melting point, right? Much, much higher. I can imagine no matter amount of heat that I put into this, probably not going to get the best kind of results when I go to try to cut it. We're damaging this material pretty good. I'm, bl I'm blowing chunks off of it, but 
cutting is not what we're we're doing here. This is no cut. Oh my goodness, that happens. Then. Oh, we're getting it hot enough now. If you come across the metal that is just being super stubborn to cut, you probably have something along the lines of some alloyed steel, something with higher alloys, or maybe it's not steel at all. So kind of funny to do, but that's not a good cut. Everything should cut a lot like this piece of 3 16 Very little preheat needed. And we can cut straight across. That's why you can tell, I mean, we can damage and we can move, I guess, metal with the torch regardless of what it is. But if you want a clean cut, you're only gonna work with ferrous metals. Now, what happens if I take that same ferrous metal and stack it on top of each other? This is where, even though it's a ferrous metal, it won't cut like you want. Now, this is just a little piece of 3 16 plate, flat bar, what have you. Whole lot of nothing. We chopped through it, no problem. All we have to do is just stack that material. Same thing as if so maybe something was bolted to this. You just have a little bit of a void. Even if I put a clamp on here and take that little bit of a gap and close it up, cutting through two pieces of steel poses a huge problem when it comes to this process. We have to rapidly oxide a point. Once we rapidly oxide that point and try to blow through, and we hit that next piece of metal that doesn't have that ready to react kind of layer, it's not gonna wanna go through it. It's gonna make us spend a lot more time. And just like the other pieces of metal that we just hacked through, doesn't mean we won't be able to get through it, but it won't be clean like you probably thought you were gonna get it. All right, let's give her plenty of preheat. Didn't even preheat it last time. Got the preheat there. Uh, as you can see, we can get rid of that first piece, but we didn't make it through the second. I think that's a good lesson there. I mean, check it out. You can melt that piece off, sure, and then you could have access to that second side, but that's not the whole point. If you had wanted a plasma cutter, I had access to that, you could plasma cut through that, even without it even being clamped. But that little void, that little gap, even with it being as tight as can be with the clamp, it will not want to go through that second piece. You got to think about that as you go up on a project that you're trying to cut apart or you're trying to cut some stuff, trying to cut some corners there. It's not going to want to do it. Not only steel, but when it comes to rust, rust has a big oxide layer on it, on not only on the outside of these tubes, but the inside of these tubes. Same thing when it comes to paint. I got to take off this piece off this trailer jack here. All this paint on here is not going to really let me get that reaction that I'm looking for right away. And the paint on the back side needs to go too. Otherwise, you can get some what I'll call some splash back. You could burn away the front of it pretty okay. But once it gets to that back side and if it's really heavy as far as paint or rust on the back side of your cuts, you might get some of that splash back. And it's going to prevent you from getting a clean cut. Let's do a couple cuts here and get all this off. I would say most of the time if I walk up on something and it's covered in paint, I'm just going to hit it with the torch and just burn it off. If you put the oxygen on it too, it really gets rid of all the paint that's kind of inhibiting you to start your cut. So if I try to start my cut right on the paint, it won't do it. Let's see what happens to the paint on that back side. Seems like it's not standing up much of a chance, which is good, it's what we wanted. The gas axe will win. And I'm using kind of a technique that I like to call long cutting the material. Even though it's only an eighth of an inch thick, there when we get to the side walls of things, we can cut even thicker. Mm. A little bounce back right in there. I could see some layer of rust. It's preventing me to get through that rust on that backside. You could just see it. You could see it right through your kerf. You could see just something there, right? That's that rust. It's so thin that it's not gonna keep anything from coming loose. Or it might, shoot. 
There you go. That's obviously not a clean cut, and rust will do that. If you have a heavy layer of that oxide on the backside, make you for a nasty cut. You can still roast it. You can still get it out of the way. And just because you could doesn't mean you should. Sometimes you just gotta. Mmm, lots of rust in this one. Bouncing me right out of my cut. Nasty. Now everything up until this point is something that you absolutely have to know before you start cutting steel uh, with a cutting torch. You obviously need to know what alloy it is, if it's going to even be able to cut properly with the torch. Can you have access to both sides? Is it covered in rust? Is it covered in paint? All things needed in order to make a clean cut with this process. The cool thing about this process is it makes some really clean cuts on the stuff it's supposed to cut. Traditionally speaking, in order to make a cut on that same material that we were doing just a moment ago, we would set our torch properly, get that neutral flame, maybe a little preheat if needed, and we would just start on the edge, keep more or less a straight up angle, proper travel speed, in order to cut something like this 3 16 flat bar. Another thing that you can do is you can long cut it. And what I mean by that is we can actually go ahead and cut long ways into this material by turning the torch to the side. Still making it through all of that steel. And there it goes. It might not have been the cleanest cut compared to what we did before. And I'm sure with a little bit more skill and more practice at it, you could get pretty good at long cutting. I don't see a lot of guys using it for a lot of fabrication or anything. Really a cutting torch in general is a tricky tool for fabrication. And I know plenty of guys who are really good with these things. I'm not him, but I can do some pretty cool stuff with it, especially if all you want from me is to just hack stuff apart. Say we have a piece of tubing that we got to cut and access to the sides are limited. Same thing with I-beams, square tubing, angle iron. You can start to cut, and as you get to the side wall, give it some slowing down, and give it some time. You'll find that sucker will go pretty freaking deep. It's just less cutting you have to do on other pieces and other sides, right? Now, I know this isn't super straight, but I think it's super cool. Didn't even have to roll it but the one time. Now I'm just in a hurry. Not a clean cut, but it's still cool. Now I'm gonna get back to cutting up and doing some weight reduction on this little box for this trailer. I hope that you guys have a better understanding of that oxy fuel process and some of the do's and don'ts with it and some of the stuff that you can still kind of accomplish. Be sure to check out all the links in the description below from our good friends over there at Victor Torches and of course, some slick FR wear from Ariat. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I need some FR grass.